is now now that there are school board representation there is the budget committee going to work with the school board to ask the questions that stop them from making decisions prior on yeah, the, I'll ask December 15th sure yeah yeah as long as we can get the answer well done okay that's what I want to hear thank you all right so now you want to go over the tax issue if that's is that it oh, oh, oh sorry do you want to well I wanted to not even speak to this course my name is Christy Heichel again and I'm actually going to put on my hat as a teacher. I teach health. I teach four different health classes during the day in four different classrooms. I have to bump a teacher every time from another room. I move from space to space to space. Um, and so not just for growth, not for new. Guidance also has to go into other people's classrooms and teach there. So please remember that there are also people that work in the building currently that do the best we can for our students. And we go to them. But it would be really nice to have a spot where they can find us, where we don't have to bump a regular classroom teacher from working in their room so that we can give the students the best service as possible. So it's not just growth when some of us are saying, we need our own space. Does that make sense? I wanted you to understand that there are people that roam in the building. They carry books in carts down the hallway from room to room to go to the students. But we've also taken classrooms over there and made them into offices. There's a when the offices should be out in the modulus. I'm just saying that it would be nice. There are many teachers that roam. But just yeah, but that would free up classrooms. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Just quickly, I'd like do, to. Do you want it anymore? Or? I just wanted it to be clear that it's not just for growth. It's for what's currently packed into that building right now. Okay. I've been there 15 years. I've seen the growth. I've seen the changes up and down. <laughs> we are tight in there. But we, we to provide for the students. We need. Okay. We would need space to give them the best. And I am all about providing students with the very best services we can. We have some of the best teachers. Now I let's wait, help them by giving them the space they need. Thank you. I would, I would also like can to I say something? something. Well, okay, in, 88, in 88, we had the high school in there. Now with just the elementary in there, you've got five or six more students by your enrollments. There's a, we've only grown five or six students. All right. Just very quickly, um, since we're bringing up the issue of space, when I thank everybody for the public just, input, just, um, but uh, we didn't really address the fact that one of the crucial needs in the building is getting rid of the modulars and getting the students inside the building where we know that they are safe and where we know that they are in a healthy environment for learning. Part of the reason why, uh, from what I understand in the history, is that we did have even more modulars when the high school was there, and we did remove some modulars when the high school left. But why wouldn't the school move the offices out to the modules and keep the students in the building? Probably because of the supervision is greater in the building. We have eight classrooms outside and 40 inside. Mm -hmm. So the supervision is greater inside. Unfortunately, we right. try to get out there. So the you teachers can... are out there. The students aren't alone by any means. But will it be safer for them to be in the building? Absolutely. Then move the offices out of the building and stop taking up classrooms with offices. And we're outside. All right. Yeah. Public. More public input. Oh. Oh. You will be on camera. You need to uh, come up and announce your name for public input. Sorry. Uh, I'm did just you wondering get, how much space we're name? taking up in the uh, in the current buildings that are in the end that we're trying to replace. Eight. I think most people in town would probably agree that maybe those buildings should eight be replaced. Classrooms. Eight classrooms. Eight classrooms. But how much square footage do you know? There's probably 900 square feet per, cl per classroom in a modular. I, I would have to actually go I check. I understood it was the, each building is about 1,700 square feet and there's four buildings. Does that sound right? And each modular is separated into to, to two sections. Two yeah. sections. Two classrooms. Um, According to the information I have, it's about 6,800 square feet with the four buildings. Yeah. That would if sound you went, about right. If you go uh, with that number and you primarily do what you said to take care of the temporary buildings and not have them there anymore, which probably most people in town would agree that's probably a good idea. Mm -hmm. they, they probably would too. Yep. Um, it would be, 
you know, 6,800 square feet currently, if you doubled that space, it'd be about 14,000, say. Build a building, uh, according to Reed Data, they're a construction, large construction company that puts out a lot of uh, cost estimates. They built the building in concrete for $112, uh, $112 per square foot. This is a concrete building. So that'd be about 1.6 million. Now, I know you're gonna be doing renovations as well, but maybe some local contractors or something can fix windows, do some painting, and try to put some people in town to work as well. Um, so, but 1.6 million, that's a lot less than 18 million. It's just yep. seems like an awful big number. That's, I think that's probably what town will actually have a problem with. Did you get other estimates besides the one that you got? To? This is an estimate, not a bid. Yeah. It'll go out to bid if it's passed by the voters in March. Oh, it's an awful big so number. big number. <laughs> yeah. And it, you know, that's, if you go by the number of students, 550 students, that's $33,000 a student. Well, $18 million. Let me ask you a question, though. Where are you putting these 14,000 square feet? I, in the backside. I don't know that. I don't know all the details. I'm just trying to help out. See, that's the problem. Yeah. That's part of the. That's part of the. Not issue. enough room where out in the backside there somewhere. I mean, if you go into that building, it's like a maze, and that's what we're trying to get yeah. rid of. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not. That would have to be determined. Right. It's just that I'm, I'm, the numbers. Just I mean, and we have so and we big. have we looked. Yeah, obviously, 18 million is a big number, but that so you know you got the population in Alton's about 5,200. So you're talking about uh, three three. Uh, let's see, quite a lot of per person. Absolutely. Uh, you know, population-wise, and if I have the number, but do the math. But uh, that's just what I wanted to add. I, I think, in addition to the space, we do have to address the things, the re the actual needs of the, the building, renovations, the renovation right. the fixing needs. of the windows, you said, well, we and do have a flooring, roof that has and that's what it's going to cost. Roofs, you've got some serious issues with right. the right. roof, and the other yeah. just yeah. regular having to repair the ventilation. Yeah. And the Mm. Those things. Yeah. Our issue in terms of where we can put another addition right. is the, the parking and field space issues. So, yeah. I, I, I would try to explore some of those areas before we had a committee you know, committing for to an 18. Years. We've had a committee for five years. <laughs> We would have loved to have had you on the committee. Okay. No, I haven't been put it, giving input in the past, but whoops. Well, hmm. All right. Maybe I will in the future. I don't know. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Any other public input? My name is Linda Willman. Um, I'm a parent of a child at Alton Central School. Um, and she started there in first grade. She's now in seventh grade. Um, I can tell you um, that. She would, this is going to get a little personal, um, but she would come home from school and um, want to let me know that she didn't want to use the restrooms in the building because of the condition that they were in. And I'm not just talking the cleanliness of the building. Um, it's just the actual condition of being able to use the facilities. I won't go into any more detail than that. Um, and she's a seventh grader now, um, and there is an absolutely gorgeous, um, area that they can now go use those facilities within the building. Um, but I think I would be remiss um, as a parent and a teacher um, and not trying to advocate for all of the other little people within that building that I know she's not alone in how she felt. Um, I'm also a teacher at the school um, and I can tell you that um, we moved here to Alton because we loved this community. We wanted the community feel. Um, we love the community. And um, I was very fortunate when I got a job working for Alton Central School. Um, I had the pleasure <laughs> of working in one of the modulars. Um, it with, I worked within the school and I also moved out to a modular. Um, it, is not something I think that is difficult for the teachers to deal with because if you're a teacher and you're passionate about what you do, you will work anywhere. Um, it, I think it comes down to the children. I know that there's some discrepancies about what we are here for. Um, I am here for all of the students within the school um, regarding the budget and regarding the renovation. Um, I can tell you that we need this renovation. Um, as a taxpayer, 
Um, and as a mother, um, I would ask you to please consider um, this for all of the students within our town. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Melissa McNeil. I'm a mom. Um, I have two children in Alton Central School. I have a nine-year-old. He's in third grade and a six-year-old in first grade. Um, they love the school. They're boys. They don't care that the toilets don't flush every other day. Um, <laughs> but they tell me about it. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm not meaning to be funny. They think it's funny. I, um, I worry. I worry for their health. I also worry because I, I'm a teacher there. In my first two years at Alton Central, this is my fourth year, thank you. Um, for the first two years there, I taught in the modular. The front one where people think it's the office because there's a sign that says to office and they think it's pointing to my room. And um, it's like Linda Wilman was saying, if you're a teacher, you don't know, I don't notice how hot it can be or how freezing cold it can be. Um, but I do feel badly for the students when it gets over 100 degrees in June, in um, when we get back to school in the fall, in um, September. When it rains, the kids can't sit near the windows because the rain actually pours into. I've never seen it before. My first year, it was pouring out. We had a really wet year, and um, a couple of the kids it was raining so hard and the kids didn't even flinch and I turned around and I looked at them and I said, what's happening? What's happening to the roof? And they're like, oh, it always floods. And that was three years ago. And the other, the last part, my modular sits right over the septic. And they've got, we can't, a couple days before our school, we can't go in there because they've got to pump it out. And you smell it all year, that septic. And it's... Again, I can deal with it. I feel very lucky to have a job there. I love working, but those kids have no choice. And I'm just putting it out there. We, it's not about growth. It's about health and being safe and being able to learn in that environment that I'm worried about. Thanks. It is a dry well. It really is a dry well. It's a dry well? It's a dry well. Is there more? <clears throat> Doesn't mean there isn't stuff going into it, but it's a dry well. Put some lime in it, kill the smell. Oh. Lime in it. Rebecca McKellar, and I just wanted to point out that with the, the reason that offices might not be out in the modulars, and I don't know this for sure, but I know that there are standards of square footage that need to be met per student according to state and federal law, and that there is a certain amount of exits that need to be available within a, a room in order for students to be in it. And that might be one of the many reasons that offices are in the main building and not in the modulars. Also, when I go into that school, I'm nervous about the fact that the office administration cannot see who is entering and exiting the building. That's a real concern. Not, you know, somebody coming in there with a gun is not going to go, oh, hi, office, I'm here, give me my name tag. So that's not going to happen. And we can't pretend that there aren't people out there that that, that couldn't happen to our kids. Um, also, I've done out the math for what my increase would be. My house is estimated a little bit under $200,000, but I rounded up to so a $200,000 home with the increase of 1.35% in the year 2014, that would be an extra $270 that I'd be spending in taxes, which would break down to $22.50 a month. I am more than willing to spend $22.50 a month so that I know that my kids are being properly supervised with people walking in and out of that school, and I know that they're in a comfortable environment. That's worth $23 a month to me. Uh, it's Thank not you. percentage. Yep. Any more? So, Kathy, do you want to go over the pink sheet? Sure. I know with last night's public hearing, and truly from where everyone's talking, from the pocket, I 
I'm a person of figures, so I wanted to come up with tangible numbers um, to float around to speak about as much or as little as anyone wants to hear. Um, obviously, the pink sheet that you all are holding, one side of it is the standalone figures. That is the direct tax impact. The other side shows how, how by, as Kathy Holt had put earlier, how by one bond debt schedule being, you know, the, the debt being paid off and the, let's say the new one pick up, how seamless the transition can be and at the, at the height, the most um, a taxpayer could see would be a 0.25 um, increase from the previous year. With that being said, that scenario at the, the height, the largest increase to, over the previous year for the tax impact, I have done 10 different scenarios on Alton Homes. I spent today for a little while going through the vision um, database here that's on the website, which is a fabulous tool. And I took and started with houses. Mine's first. <laughs> Wanted to see what it was going to do for me. Based on my tax rate, which I took my tax bill and emulated how it's all configured, make sure it tied to what I was figuring. For me, I have a house, granted I have just added on, but the old value of my house was $146,600. Taking the tax rate of today and adding 25 cents to the school rate would only increase my taxes $36.65 one year's worth. I've gone from a $146,600 house net valuation, of course, assessed valuation with the town, all the way up to a house that's $524,400. Don't you pick a middle range? Like so a middle pick. range. Can I ask a question? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't see anywhere in here where it would show the people how much their tax rate would be if the high school bond was done and we didn't didn't start any new uh, debt. Absolutely. So, I mean, and, and do these numbers reflect what we're already paying in the bond? Because you're saying seamless, so we're paying 68 cents per thousand, correct? Mm -hmm. Is that 68 cents filtered into this? Because the other we're side, still that side, the other on side. side. Yep. Okay. We tried to be as transparent as possible to give the public the figures. One side is the, is the simple tax impact of each Warren article. The other side is showing how it filters through if something were to pass in March. Granted, you can take the numbers and figure them any way you want. Of course, I'm going to figure them so that you can see what this could f do. If it passed in March. What this could do. So anywhere, uh, Kathy had asked if I could take a, a middle of the road. A, a net value of an assessed valuation here in Alton of a $291,000 house with the, the you know, land and building is an increase per year of $72.75. I'm more than willing to make copies for everyone to take a look at what these calculate to. Like I said, I have 10 different variations from all the different values of the houses the here highest, in town. The highest one at I 524. 524.40 is $131.10 per year more. I also have a uh, question about the $18 million. Um, it, how, much, how much of the $18 million, whatever, um, so on dollars, is appropriated for land purchase? None. Nothing. There's, and there's no current negotiations or talks about purchasing land. Absolutely That's none. just that. So That's if you a wanted to purchase land, then a, that would be another thing another to come article. to the voters. Okay. So the maximum based, well, not maximum, obviously, there are houses more than 524,000, but looking at the general range, range yep. $131 in the most expensive year of this past of this possible bond. impact of the bond. All right. Anything else? So we'll move to Warren Article 4. Should Article 3 be adopted, shall the all school district raise and appropriate the sum of $1,750,000 to add to geothermal heating and cooling to the Alton Central School, including equipment, installation, professional service fees, site development fees, and any other items incidental to or necessary for the 
said heating and cooling system to authorize the issuance of not more than 1,750,000 of bonds and notes in accordance with the provision of the Mis Municipal Finance Act and authorize the school board to issue and negotiate such bonds on notes and to determine the rate of interest thereon and further to raise and appropriate an additional sum of $39,861.11 for the first year's interest payment on the bond. This article is contingent on a, on the upon the approval of Article 3. And the Budget Committee did not approve this one. Uh, question. Uh, uh, to Mr. Krause. Yeah. Uh, do you have that information I requested yesterday? And public input. <laughs> Just to break down what they are. Figure this out. Mm-hmm. I was just going to separate them, so you can just keep passing. Thank you very much. Send us. Oh, yeah. I got that. I requested that I um, run you a spreadsheet of potential payback for <coughs> Um, the expenditure of the geothermal heat mm -hmm. and unfortunately these huge amounts of numbers here are those paybacks um, just to give you a little bit of uh, explanation <coughs> mr. Miller asked me to give a um, I guess the best guess scenario because realize this is a crystal ball type prediction um, but I went and researched um, the price of heating oil from 2005 to 2011, and that's published with the state has some average that they published for the uh, state of New Hampshire, <clears throat> and it increased 62%, which is 10% a year. I used 9% to be a little bit conservative, and um, a 3% increase on electric rates. I have no basis for the 3% increase on electric rates. I just figured that you should have something in there to increase your electric Excuse rate. me, uh, just a question on what you just said. Is this the best case, worst case, or most probable scenario? The I one you're talking you about right now. this is the most probable scenario. Probable, not the best case, the, the most probable well, I scenario. Think, I guess I didn't run a best case. I, I, okay. I ran what I thought was sure. an accurate representation of where we're going to end up. Thank you. Um, and you can play with this 100 times if you want to change it to 8% or whatever you think it sure. should be. <clears throat> so um, the... Uh, ground source heat pump, which is really the effect of a geothermal system, is comprised of about 50% cost of in wells, and the wells obviously have no life to them. They're a closed loop system. They don't, you don't draw off water off of them like you do with some residential systems, if you've heard of that. Um, so basically, we look at the well portion of a geothermal system as forever. And there shouldn't be, save some natural disaster, anything that would affect the well portion. The, then the next portion of that is a certain proportion of ductwork, which I don't have it broken out into pieces, and then pumps and then some equipment. <clears throat> so the ground source heat pumps right now are known to save over 64% over oil, presently right now. I used 50% just, again, to be conservative so that we're not taking it out to the outlet limit. What you see on these, limit, on these uh, figures here over on the left-hand side is a present heating cost for a similar energy efficient regular oil heat school. Not your school now, because I think you're spending more than that. <laughs> but in fairness, to make a fair comparison, we used a third of a gallon per square foot. Right now, you're probably headed towards a half a gallon per square foot or something in that range. So that the top line there is the uh, existing high-efficient school. The next line down is the ground source heat pump. Again, 50% of the 126 gives you the $63,000 cost. And then your annual savings. I flat-rated the cost of this over 127000 over 20 years. I'm not an accountant. I just did it so we had a number we could look at from a comparison standpoint. 
You can see the net savings in the first year <coughs> ends up being a negative number because it's $127,000 bond cost. You're only saving $68,000. Um, but you can also see that in year five, that becomes a positive number. Um, underneath it, I just did a cumulative savings. I mean, we can run this any way you want it, but just to try to get that information out to people, that bottom level layer is the cumulative savings. You can see at year 15, <coughs> it pays back the bond in its entirety. Whether or not you choose or the board chooses to prepay the bond is way beyond my expertise. But I thought what Mr. Miller was asking for is to just get some concept of what this stuff can do to save you in the long run. Mm -hmm. That's what the scenario there does. <clears throat> the next scenario, if you look down just below the cumulative savings, escalator at 5% and 3% for electricity. You go down to probably the most unlikely scenario, which is an escalator of 3% for the oil and an escalator of 1.5% for the electricity. I truly wish this would happen. I don't really think it's going to happen. But in a worst case scenario, the positive comes in, positive cash flow, not a complete payoff, but a positive cash flow comes in at year 18, and then it pays off at year 22. I really think that's an unlikely scenario. And maybe it's an average of the top one and the bottom one, but I think it really illustrates that, the, that, the, that that product does work. And what, what I haven't taken out of here because of the length of paper that would be is to start looking at this cumulative savings over the next 50 years. It's stunning. It's really an investment up front, which unfortunately is expensive, but the payback is truly stunning to me in the long run. Anyone that's looking at lowering their operating costs, which usually is a very high piece of a budget, this is a very important thing to do to lower an operating cost. What's the average life of the system? Well, you know, I'm not sure that there's been enough around enough to tell you the average life of the system. There is compressors and there are pumps. There's a lot of piping. There's a lot of duct work. And so obviously those components have a failure rate. I, in year 20, started throwing in $10,000 a year for whatever. What does the salesman say? It should last forever? It should last no, 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 no. There, there's, there's, an, there, there just isn't a number that I can give you that says in year 17. I mean, it could be that in year 14, you're going to have to put some money into it. And it might skip to year 23, you'll have to put some money into it. So I, I just threw in 10000 a year at year 20 because that's a reasonable expectation for pumps and things like that. Um, it, and our electric bill will increase because of the pumps, correct? But this, this factors electric costs. That's why we have the escalator of 3% for electric costs. So yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. It's an electrical-driven uh, source of energy. Now, the good thing about that is And that the pumps run 24-7, correct? No. No, no they no, don't? They, don't. they run when you need the heat out of the system. Or when you need to cool it. Or when you need to cool it, which obviously is optional. So it's pretty much, I mean, so the pumps will be running off and on year-round. No, no, they wouldn't run year round. Well, you're either heating or cooling. Only if you choose to cool. Right. The cooling here the really cooling is. Cooling now, I'm thinking we're going to choose to cool. <laughs> well, that that goes back that goes back to a budget <laughs> right. process, I suppose. You know, uh, and I can't really. I, all I can really address is the heat side of it. You have to heat, and the heat side of it's very accurate. I put in some money for cooling. Obviously, if you cool all summer. Mm -hmm. That number would go up. It is more efficient to cool that way, um, but I can't. But then we're we're not going to see. Um, it would take us beyond year 20 to see <coughs> this pay for itself if we start cooling all summer. Correct? Absolutely. But why would you cool all summer? Because we do now. We have air conditioners in the school. Correct? We just bought you know, half a dozen last you year. You don't cool the entire school. You don't cool the purchase. entire school. I don't think you yeah, just have isolated will, places in the school. This will be on a zone. So that's you can, right. That's you right. Can I mean, you you will have various zones. To you, of if you it's can. there, it's going to get used. I really, right. think, I so feel that way. What, what's the bit? What's the? It wouldn't be a difference from the air conditioning. You have professional there. estimation. What's the big rat's nest? What's what's your worst what's your worst fear that could happen? For instance, things have happened up at the high school that nobody expected. Okay, after a few years, what can blow, and are we indemnified under warranty if they do blow? 
your compressors typically end up with a five to ten year warranty. We can increase that number, but you pay for it. I mean, it's like an extended warranty. So, I mean, you usually would stick in the five to ten year range and expect that you're getting a good enough quality in that range attached to it that you're going to go out further than that. Um, some of the problems we had in the high school were really unrelated to geothermal. They were, you know, found asbestos issues and found structural issues that had to be corrected. So they were really very unrelated to this one piece of the deal. And, and you would expect that, Ed, from what you said, that any significant costs wouldn't hit be, before year 14 or year 18? Well, it, it, it's a crystal ball. I'll be very okay. honest with you. It could happen in year 10. It isn't supposed to happen in year 10. I mean, What's a compressor go for? They're smaller compressors, so I don't know the okay. price off the top of my head. So okay. it's not like you're working with three units in the whole school. Okay. You're working with multiple units, so their fractional cost you know, is thousands of dollars, not tens of thousands of dollars. This has been very helpful. I appreciate yeah, your well, work. I, and, I, and I would have brought this before if we had requested it. I'm sorry I missed your other meeting, but I did have a previous commitment, and if I bagged off on them, they wouldn't have been happy either. So I apologize I couldn't make it, but... Sometimes it is conflict for me. And, and these numbers accurately reflect the uh, outcome of geothermal in New Hampshire in this particular uh, zone. Correct. Correct. And realize I've used 50% when they're telling me we can now do 70%. Okay. So 64%. So fudge factor in that. And right. I've used 9% for the oil increase when the last five or six years it's been 10%. So there's a couple of safety factors that built into that also. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Great. Impressive. Thank you. Before you go, can I just ask you a question? Okay. Presently, we use room air conditioners. Pardon me? Presently, we use room air conditioners in, I think, I don't know how many of our rooms. Some of our rooms. If we were to replace those with the AC available through geothermal, do we save money? You definitely save money, and, and I did factor in $10,000 of usage of room air conditions right now for a savings of $5,000. And, and it is a very important note that, that, that Mrs. Howard's made that um, the more you use it, the more it's going to cost. Right. So that's a very optional. The air conditioning comes because it's very much like a refrigerator. <clears throat> You turn it the other direction, you get the cooling out of it. So it's there, not necessarily to be abused, but it's there. We're not paying extra to put an element in to get AC out of it. It's there because of the nature of the system. But it does cost electricity to run. Thank you. A quick clarification. When you were giving us the numbers earlier, that includes all three of the warrant articles, um, the worst case scenario one, or? No, I simply. Um, was that just for the building? Just the for the building. Just for the work? one large ACS renovation one. I did not want to throw in any others. I really wanted to get to the meat and the potatoes, and I'll call it the big one. Mm -hmm. So, yep. We think this is pretty big. Yeah. Any other public input on that article? All right, moving on. Article 5. If Article 3 be adopted, shall the Alton School District raise and appropriate the sum of $2,070,555 and no cents to construct a gymnasium at the Alton Central School, including equipment, professional service fees, site development, costs, and any other item incidental to and or necessary for said gymnasium to authorize the issuance of not more than $2,070,555 and no cents of bonds and notes in accordance with the provision of the Municipal Finance Act and authorize the school board to issue and negotiate such bonds and notes and to determine the rate of interest thereon and further to raise the appropriation an additional sum of $47,162.64 for the first year's interest payment on the bond. This article is a contingent upon approval of Article 3. And this was added because, because you guys wanted to, uh, was, some people wanted to include the gym too, right? Yeah, but there was also a petition article added last night, so it would have been added either way. Okay. Any public input on this? I was the one who put in this petition article, and it was directly in response to uh, the, whatever happened at the grounds meeting where, where the gym got pulled out. Uh, I felt that this 
is such an uh, important community resource, not just a school resource. These gyms are community resources that can be used year-round, everybody in this room and the children. Uh, and, and pulling it out really limited things down. And, and I want to bring up a situation that occurred just in this last couple of weeks. I, uh, as you may or may not know, I also do the computers for the town offices and whatnot. Uh, so I happened to be in the Parks and Rec um, building when it, it turned out that the entire basketball program uh, got jeopardized because the Prospect Mountain High School could no longer support the 650 people who were going to be involved with prospect, prospect with basketball in Prospect Mountain on Saturdays uh, because there was an issue with the varsity basketball team who needed to move to Saturday. Um, they don't there's, use the there's a number of issues. I'm sorry? They don't use the middle school. The, uh, who doesn't use the middle school? The Parks basketball and people, Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec does. They may yeah. be doing that now, but they, they had to displace other yes, people. Yes, they did. So they there do. was a decision in which 12 students who were doing the varsity basketball displaced 650 students over to, uh, to ACS who displaced some other people in it. And it occurs to me that if we have a larger, better facility, these things wouldn't happen. And we could also be using these at night for more adult programs. This is, a, I think, this is a wonderful community resource and uh, not just for the students. Um, what's our student population? It was five, 548? 549 now. <laughs> we, got, we gained a student. 549. We lost one also, and gained two. There's, there's also 58 um, homeschool students who can also use this mm -hmm. facility. So that's 607 students who could use this facility directly as well as, as the community in general. Now, that was my entire point for bringing the petition forward and then the school board decided to take it on, so I just let him take it and run with it. Okay. I agree with the Thank you. Steve's got questions for school board? For the school board. Um, we have a wonderful gym at the high school. What, why, aren't, why aren't you using the high school gym? We are using the high school gym. What do you mean? For the community. As of well, why, why well. huh? there's, don't forget, there's four basketball teams up there that have practices and games. So that gym is pretty much fully utilized. I don't know when you would think that they would be able to use it when it's not being used. I mean, it's used all the time during basketball season. And I, in there tonight. And the, and if there was a brand, if there was a brand new gym now, it wouldn't be a second gym. So it wouldn't be able to be used any more often than the gym now, correct? The, it would be a gym, a cafetorium, whatever the, um, it would be a multi-purpose area where the gym is presently, and this would be another gym. So it would be used for phys ed during the day, which I know has issues, and then it could be, and the gym would be used as a gym. So there would be two gyms in that school, is that what you're saying? The, no, there wouldn't be two gyms. There's, there's one be, gym, right. but I'm saying there's one gym that's being used now for whatever, you know, basketball, volleyball, yep. or whatever, yep. right? By changing gyms, that doesn't, that's not going to affect the usage from the community. No. One bit. Unless they can use the they can gym. They use the multipurpose area. Area for other things. The basketball courts won't still be there, though. As long as it's not during lunch. As long as it's not during lunch. Because that's okay. where the if kids a basketball are team, If a basketball team is practicing, yep. what's available to the community? Either the gym or the multipurpose area. Most likely, if it's a basketball team, they would be in the gym, so the multipurpose area would be available. And the multipurpose area has hoops? Yes. It's, It'll be the present. It's the current gym. gym. Yeah. So you're going to have two gyms? So we will have two gyms. gyms. You're, 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 Just you're, making it a different name. You can, you can you double a size, a triple a size, whatever you want to call it. It's two gyms, right? Except, Just call it a different except name. Except for lunch. Okay. I just That's want to say I that we would be using that for lunch. Yep. Okay, Dude. it's not replacing. It's a new gym. Yep. It's an additional gym. Yep. Correct. Okay. If you want to see the original design that includes mm -hmm. the gym, we do have that here. The new gym is here. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm looking at it. I'm sorry. Down, so with that, that's the orange? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. This is the new gym. And this is what is presently the gymnasium. 
that will become really the cafeteria for kids. Right now our cafeteria is too small. But this will have become the cafeteria. The present kitchen will expand into what is presently the cafeteria so that we can accommodate more kitchen space. They're really crowded in there. I don't know if you've ever tried to work in there. I have. So that will expand to become a bigger kitchen. We will be able to feed more students in a bigger kitchen. But when that space is not being used as a cafeteria <clears throat> or big, large group study area for multiple things, assemblies, assemblies etc., which right now we have to cancel gym in order to have an assembly, then um, that will be able to be used for other things, especially at night. We do really struggle to schedule because we do have requests from the community. And Prospect Mountain is scheduled tight because of the number of sports that they have. How many square feet is that old space going to be? Uh, I have no idea. The old space is 5,800 square feet. What's the new space? 10,000, including storage and bathrooms, so we can lock it off at night. Wait a minute. Okay, so. It's probably because I, I don't I just don't understand the configuration. You're doubling the square foot. You're doubling the square footage of no, the. It's going from 58 to 10,000. There's a lobby. There's bathrooms and storage. So the you, next square footage. You're increasing. You're increasing the space 40 percent. What a usage. But not the actual gym. Okay. That's the lobby and everything. I mean, the defense of the of the gym is that they're double they're double booked right now. So that we can use that one at night for community things and still have a place for kids to practice. We're not going to rip apart the stage. It's going to stay in the existing building, uh, the existing gym space. So any kind of theatrical things will happen in the existing gym. But so bad days. That, that action in the next space. And it's also, quite frankly, if you're really looking at the game in there, it, it's, it's very, very, very tight on clearances around the uh, facility. Really, I don't, I don't want to say it's dangerous, but it's potentially hazardous to a student. Um, you just don't have the distance that they can run. Kids are getting bigger now. Um, you know, six graders are six feet sometimes. So the run that they need to stop when they're doing a layup um, is, is quite short. The space on the side is close to three to four feet. So it increases all those kind of things, but it doesn't duplicate the stage, which is perfectly sufficient for what we need. A qu question to, to uh, the school board: whose whose job or uh, responsibility is it to provide uh, space for community activities in Alton? Is it the town's responsibility, or is it the school's responsibility? The school is for the community use. I, it, it, there is a request that needs to go through the school to, in order to get use of the facility. No, who who who. Whose responsi ultimate responsibility is it to provide space, right, for community activities in the town of Alton that, for adults? Is it the town of Alton or is it the school? I would school? guess the town of Alton. Thank you. Or maybe the groups of um, adults who want to have the, I mean, it's they could do basket. fundraising and right. build a road do facility. Do we have more public input on this? Interesting. I just wanted to say that... Um, my husband was at a basketball practice for my son who's in second grade and well he's on the third fourth grade basketball team but you know these are not big kids they're not adults playing in the gym and he f still felt like it was unsafe the bleachers are too close to the clearance of the court kids could easily be hurt and then you're dealing with lawsuits and that's a lot of money you can also slide the bleachers back you can except when they're but, occupied but is that safe for the people sitting in the bleachers i mean it's you could find something wrong with any gym or school or anything. I mean, well, Virgil, for practice, it's, a, it's okay to move the bleachers back, but for a game, yeah. you need the right. spectators there. Unless... In New Durham, they sit on the stage. They don't have bleachers; they sit up on the stage. New Durham. Hey. I don't know that would accommodate everybody. That no, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't accommodate the crowd. That's well. I'm just that, saying that. Yeah. So it, I, I mean, but the stage Durham, is packed over there, and people but, are standing outside. Yeah, New Durham's stage is on the side. Ours is behind a I basket. I know, but I'm just so. saying, we've got bleachers, but New Durham doesn't have half the room we got, and they've been using it for 30 years like that. And you commented on how small it was when we went there. Hey, any more public input? 
My name is Christy Heichel. I am a parent in this com community, and I'm also the phys ed teacher. I spend quite a bit of time in this room, and I hope you understand that it would be very remiss of me um, to not support this. I do not think physical fitness is frivolous. Um, I do not think health is a waste. Last year, I ran two after-school programs, one called Move and Groove for K through two, and another one called Get Up and Go, where we were teaching pre-sport, pre-skill activities to children. Mr. Perrin and I, Russ Perrin's the other phys ed teacher, we can't do that this year. There is no time available for the physical education department to run after-school programs really? in our own building. Because we need to make room for sports, for parks and rec. We bend, we bend, we bend, we bend. Why would um, the school come first? Um, because we look at the numbers that we can do, the commitment that we can make, past practices. Um, we're starting something new. It was, it was relatively successful last year, but I would feel horrible if we wanted to start something new this year and we bumped wonderful existing programs. You don't take away what is good right. and what is already going really well to, to try something new. And I would love to see more. I want more physical activity. I want more opportunities. Times have changed. When I was a little girl, I would go outside and play and my mom would flick the lights and I would come home. And most parents can't do that anymore. They don't have a place to send their kids after school where they know they are safe and supervised and taught proper fitness activities where they can learn and be safe. And I will also put in that my equipment room where I store things, and for those of you who've been in the building, it's in the old locker room. I store the balls next to a toilet. I store my gym mats in a shower. That space could be improved. It would benefit our students. I'd like the taxpayers to have the opportunity to say, yes, this is something we can do, or no, it is not. I'm always going to benefit from more physical activity in this town. I will never say, hey, let's take away from this so we can do this. These are good programs that are already there. We squeeze them in. We make it work, but we can do more. And I'd like support for that. And that's what I've asked of the community, and that's why I ask this to go forward. Thank you. Thanks. Linda Wilman here again. Um, I can sure, I'm sure you can appreciate the delicate hats that we're wearing this evening, being parents and teachers at the school. Um, I'd like to speak as a parent first. Um, as I said earlier, my daughter has been um, in the school for years, and she has participated through Parks and Rec. And um, she basically plays every sport under the sun. Um, so. If there is a dance at the school, they can't have their practice or they can't have a game there. Um, and so, you know, for a number of reasons, I think it would be beneficial for the students at Alton Central School to have this new area so that they can have two things going on at the same time. Um, so that's my, my taxpayer slash parent um, suggestion. Speaking as a teacher in the school, um, we have really ramped up the services that we have after school and the programming, as Mrs. Heichel said, for after school activities. Um, we share the cafeteria with Weight Watchers. They come in um, and, you know, we've, I'd like to say, we've battled a little bit of, about where we can go. And um, as Christy said, we don't want to move anybody out of their classrooms. Teachers are there after school doing their planning. And it can be disruptive for um, a volunteer group to go into a classroom where they're doing something really loud and, and they're trying to have a meeting at the same time. Um, so that's my input. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Hey, just a quick question. Why does Weight Watchers take precedent over the kids? I believe, uh, well, I don't know if I can speak to that or not officially, but I believe they pay to use the building, and they are... Well, we have the community center, too, down the bay yep. that Weight Watchers and stuff can well, use. Well, I think um, 
you know, I was listening to what you were saying before about whose responsibility is it, you know, the town or the school for these things. And I think, and all the requests for facilities use actually come through my office at some point. And I, I know that the district has tried really hard to make sure that there's always cooperation with the town. And I think that if the space is there, logically we want to use it efficiently because we don't want to say no and possibly leave something empty. Uh, okay. No, you have to get your own gym. You know, we, we do want to cooperate. We do believe that there's not, there shouldn't be that much of a separation between the school and the town because we all have usually a common goal. Well, the, t the town may not have great facilities, but the town has alternative facilities. Oh, yeah. And I, what I don't understand is why um, Mrs. Heichel's program w would even consider not take precedent over a community activity. It's, it's over our after school sports. Hmm? It's our after school sports. The teams need to practice okay. after school. Yeah. Okay. Well, as far as Great Y, I mean, we have the community center, we have the Mount Major building over in West Alton. Not big enough. What ain't big enough? The West Alton one? We've moved them around in our facility to make sure that we. Yeah. Hi. More public input? Um, again, I'm Steve Renner. Just pull up a chair. Um, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to speak to the. To uh, something that was mentioned earlier about the security of the existing gym. Um, I routinely play volleyball at this time on Tuesday nights at the gym, at the Alton Central School gym. Uh, we used to play at the high school until because of an incident not involving our, word, our group, but a different group that, that for a period of time no one had access to the facility. Um, without supervised use. That's an entirely different issue. I think that there can be some things done that, that free up particularly Prospect Mountain High School for community use, as we talked about earlier with the baseball fields. Um, but when we're in there playing volleyball, uh, to be honest, I feel like I could walk anywhere around that building that I wanted to. Um, the door is unlocked to the outside of that building. Um, anybody could walk in that building at that point. That's up to the janitors to have it locked down from the high school and the elementary part. That's yep. up to the janitors. Well, unfortunately, for the access that we have, there is no double door closure. If you walk in that door, yes, there's one to the left as you would go towards the cafeteria, but there's not one to the right. We could access, and if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't recall seeing double doors anywhere down the music that room lead up to the music room, to the art room, or downstairs to the, the locker rooms, the, the gym offices, or the phys ed offices. So, so it's not a secure location. The way that the, that this new gym would be designed is that it can be sealed off. You can still have access to storage if you needed to, to borrow equipment or utilize equipment. You'd still have access to restrooms, but the rest of the building would be sealed off. And that would be true for, for, for any community event. You know, if Parks and Rec were to come in there and use that facility, it's sealed off. The other thing is just a, a positive note about the Prospect Mountain basketball issue. I work with the younger kids, the first and second graders, and we were not bumped from our time slot because we're early enough in the mornings on Saturdays. And the benefit of using that facility is the hoops there are adjustable. If I were to do this program at Alton Central School, we don't have adjustable hoops and there's no way that a first or second grader can shoot a ball properly at a 10 foot hoop. So fortunately Prospect has the ability for us to lower the hoops. And had we been bumped out of there, we wouldn't have been able to teach kids shooting. Um, we certainly could have worked on other fundamentals of the game, but it's an added bonus that kids get to play a scrimmage at the end of the day and actually take a few shots on the net. So that's a positive thing, and I'm sure that that's something that would be implemented in the new gym as well. Um, in terms of the community owning a gym and the school owning a gym, that was mentioned, why not, why not have the community build one? The community is building one. It just happens to be attached to the school. There's no reason. I'm not going to buy two kayaks so I can kayak at Mary Meeting and I can kayak in Winnipesaukee. I'm going to buy one kayak and figure out a way to take it where I need to take it. So we're going to have we're going to have two gyms as it is, two and a half gyms if you consider that cafetorium another public, large facility space, and I think that's going to be adequate for it to meet all the needs of the community and the school. 
Thank you. Any more public input? <coughs> Next article. Article 6. In the event that Article 5 is defeated to see if the school district will vote to rate vote to create an expendable trust fund under the provision of RSA 19820-she known as the geothermal energy expendable trust fund for the purpose of contracting and installing a geothermal heating system for the Alton Central School facilities further to raise and appropriate the sum of fifty thousand dollars no cents towards this purpose and to name the school board as agents to expend this fund this warrant article is to be void and have no effect if warrant article 4 is approved by the voters the Alton School Board recommends. And we didn't, as a preliminary, as a budget pay committee, we did not recommend that one. Any public input on that? Seeing none? Uh, I have some, oh. I, have I have questions. Um, at $50,000 a year, it'll take 35 years before you get a geothermal unit. My best guess is the technology 35 years from now will make this null and void, and there'll be other, some other technology, you know, that'll probably be more appropriate at, the, at that point. That's number one. Number two, if this is adopted, is Mr. Krause here? No. Nope. Uh, if, if, this, this is, if this is adopted, I would have, I'd have the... Um, you know, the, the same a couple of questions. Number one is, why wouldn't you bond this for, for $1, million seven fifty right now? And that's an alternative, have a 20-year bond for $1, million seven fifty. And I would like to see the comparative cost between a bond and $50,000 and $50,000 a year. Uh, and if... It seems to me that if we keep putting in fifty thousand dollars a year, you know, there's going to be years periodically where this may be turned down. So you can't guarantee it's going to be passed for thirty-five straight years. Therefore, this the chances are this may go as long as forty years or fifty years. And it seems, you know, uh, you know, uh, it's questionable whether this makes sense unless you're either going to do it or not do it. But, you know, to, to say, for instance, you know, we're going to fix the windows eventually, you know. That's been 20 years. You know, you know it, that's a forever deal. The bathrooms are a forever deal, you know. And I understand the reasons for it, but this is just another forever deal where we're putting $50,000 every year in to, you know, a fund that, quite frankly, I don't think will, you know, probably be used in my lifetime. So my question is, why wouldn't you? My, my alternative would be to bond out, if, if this is going to work, and this makes sense to me, the numbers make sense, you bond the seven, you bond the million seven fifty right now and put it in if it doesn't pass, if the school doesn't pass. And the only reason you wouldn't do that is because if it doesn't pass this year, the school, the, the this renovation of the school, you'd want to bring it the next year, the next year, and the next year. And you would meeting. probably have this as a white elephant, sit, you know, sit, you know, uh, already bonded out. I'm, I'm not sure I understand why you would bond something for geothermal what happens, if, for instance, if if the renovation doesn't pass, the eighteen million dollars? Correct. Okay, and I don't, and I have no, you know, I don't know one way or the other. Um, I'm in favor of some re renovation. You know, I'm just not sure what right now. But if if that doesn't pass, you bond this. Once that bond passes, have you made a commitment not to renovate and put this into the school? Or can it be used for the new school? In other words, with the pipes, the way they're, they're moved, okay. is, is it portable? Okay. I, I think I can actually answer most of your question. Okay. And that's why it's worded the way it is very carefully. Some of the articles are worded. Um, the Buildings and Grounds Committee, and we do have the chair of the committee here tonight, Marilyn Dame. So if I'm doing anything wrong, I'm sure Marilyn will help correct me. Um, the Buildings and Grounds Committee was very clear that when the project total came in, the, the total cost was higher than anticipated. And at that time also, the anticipated 
interest rate on that bond was higher than we anticipated. And so the committee did a lot of soul searching and said, if we remove the cost of the gym and we put the geothermal as a separate Warren article so people can see that that's something that they can do, it will be a cost savings over time, but if they really don't want to do it, we'll have it as a separate article. Let's take the gym off, put the geothermal out as a separate Warren article so that they can see that cost as a separate cost and vote it in, recognizing that we will do our best to educate them as a cost savings long term. So that's why you have two separate Warren articles for the cost of the renovation, rebuild, and addition, and the cost for geothermal. Both the cost of the rebuild and the geothermal will be bonded. So the 18.8 and the 17.5 will be part of a bond, and we will do them together. The second geothermal will do two things. If we do not get the rebuild, then we will not obviously do a geothermal. If, however, the rebuild is close and the voters vote for the geothermal, we will have set aside some money as a savings plan and have a sense that people want to do geothermal when we do the rebuild. So it's kind of like getting a sense of where the voters are going. If they don't vote for the geothermal, we will have a sense of that as well. So it gives us two things. Money set aside in preparation for a geothermal heating system and gives us a sense of what the voters are thinking about this as a program. We could say, no, we're not going to do it, but it's a, it's a way to save and get a sense of public opinion at the same time. Would have been easier to do a poll. Well, we've not had very good luck with polls. We've gotten small amounts of people telling us basically 50-50. Wouldn't it make more sense to put the two geothermal articles together so, they, so instead of on separate pages maybe so they can look at them we actually side by talked, side? We actually talked about placement and we felt that that would be more confusing. How is that? Put the three articles that will be bonded together and put the other geothermal after that so that it didn't look like why am we doing two geothermals together. Well, to me, it looks like you want geothermal for the new building, but if you don't get it, you want to put money, you want to take money anyways and put it in an account. That's exactly right. Because we're going to get geothermal just slammed down our throat. We're not trying to slam it down your throat. We're trying to find out if you want it. If we say no here, well, you say then it should be no here. Not necessarily. I mean, what if you well, say what you're no saying because you don't want to bond at this time? Right. Then you ask for geothermal down the road, not on the same thing, so it feels like you're slamming it down our throat, like you, the school, this is how the school does it. They're going to get it one way or the other. We've talked about the fact that, generally speaking, people save money to set aside for something that they know comes up in their future. Your water heater, you know, is seven years old. You know that it's probably going to hit the maximum life. You start saving for it now so that when it does go, you don't get a huge hit. When your car is coming to its end of its life and you fixed it and fixed it and This fixed is it. not a new hit. This is not repairing. This is a brand new item. Absolutely. And if we say no for geothermal, then that should mean no, not put money aside in an account because we're going to get it one way or the other. Let the voters decide. Yep. Public input. Virgin, can I just call your attention to the last sentence of this warrant article before the recommendation section? This warrant article to be void and have no effect if Article 4 is approved is approved by the voters and I just wanted but to what I'm saying is if article 4 ain't approved you're putting money aside because we're going to get geothermal no matter what one way or the other you're going to get your geothermal and I'll guarantee you raising and appropriating and setting money aside that's what that money is for you can't spend it on anything else but it ain't going to matter because one way or the other they're going to get it but so if you if vote you no for both then we're not getting it no matter what but if right. this passes right. then there's no going back. The voters don't have a, have a way yeah, to if say they no. Vote, now we, you know, okay. But they so can vote no this time. That's what they can do. They can vote. They always have the option of voting yes or no. If they don't want geothermal, vote no for both of them, and there's no, right. just vote no. They have an option. Correct? Right. 
Any other input? I make the assumption that the Alton voters can figure this out. Yeah. I, I say we take a five minute recess because I need to. About 10 minutes. Take a Ten five minutes? minutes? Five minutes. Five minutes is good. All right, I'll call the meeting back to order at 9 15. All right. I would accept a motion to recess until Thursday if the board would I'll so incline because <laughs> I heard some people would like that from the administration. So. Mm -hmm. Recessing until Thursday now? Yeah. Yep. Could we at least get through Article 8 since I know that we have people Article here? 8, I don't even, I just got put in my lap. I don't, I haven't even looked at Article 8. We have to read it first. Yeah. I can't do anything with Article 8, so that's, right? Mm-hmm. Well, that's the teacher's contract. Yeah, I just got that tonight. So. Okay, can I ask a question? When was negotiations uh, finished for the... Um... I actually don't know anything about negotiations, so I'll have to defer to somebody else. Uh, negotiations were finished on the 22nd of uh, December. <laughs> the 22nd? 22nd of December. Okay, and today... Mediation. And today is January? Well, then it had to be ratified by the teachers' union. And yeah. they went on break, so they couldn't ratify it until they came back on Monday the 2nd. Yeah. On Monday the 3rd, and then we needed to have, uh, the school board need to ratify it. We didn't have a meeting until the 9th. You couldn't have called a separate ratification meeting? Well, we thought that Prospect was going to have a meeting, and then that one didn't happen, so we didn't. Okay. All right. So I'll take a motion to recess until Thursday. Motion to recess until one. Thursday. Yeah. No. Seconded. Right. Seconded. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That'll be at six o'clock. Wait a minute, Lauren something to say. say something. Oh, Lauren? The hearing. Lots I just would like a copy of the old teacher's contract. Current teacher's contract. Huh? Pardon? I I'd like to make a request I'd like to make a request to the um, school on the contract. Um, could you I just want the itemize where all the changes are, both qualitative, uh, quali qualitatively and quantitatively, in the contract. The, they're color coded. Hmm? Oh, did you? They're not color coded. Color -coded? No, uh, mine was color coded. Not mine. Because <laughs> you're special. I'm sorry, <laughs> <Mine>? it's late. <laughs> they want you to understand it. <laughs> no, seriously. Okay. But, when, even if there's a name change. Again, I have to defer to somebody because yeah, I yeah, don't do the contract. All right. I'll be the SAU office. Do you office. still have the one that's color coded? So I'm going to get a copy of the, the old one. Association. And when, when, can we pick, when can we pick that up to review it? Do, Kathy, yeah. we can pick that up tomorrow, correct? If it's, no. It, let me just see if Deb oh. has one color coded right now. I have one color coded right you. now. Oh, sure. Maybe you dig I can give I'm somebody. I'm looking for my team. I have one color code. You want this one, Steve? Oh, yeah. That's the differences. Is he recessing the whole meeting just to hear it? Uh, Do you want mine? It if it's color -coded. Huh? Do you want mine? So I've got another one right here. Dave, oh. to make some copies. That's not color coded. color coded. They're going to make it for us. Yeah. Huh? I know, but so they can. So they we should have it for now. Have, I think they would be able to do that. that.